Martha's problem wasn't that she wasn't doing enough. She was doing. Martha's problem, as I believe I already said it, is she probably, like some of us at times, left her first love, lost her first love. I think Martha's problem is she just simply did not love Jesus Christ properly. Now, she loved Christ. She wanted to serve him. She wanted to please him. But things got out of balance in her life. And she started thinking about all the things she did. And that equated to her love. Boy, if you've been saved for any length of time and you have any zeal for God, I'm sure you've found yourself in this position before. Well, I love Christ because of this. And I do this. And, but you fail to sit at the feet of Jesus. And so this message is applicable for any Christian who really wants to serve God Almighty. And so in contrast to Martha, we have Mary who's sitting at the feet of Jesus and is listening to his words. And last week we identified some things spiritually that represents sitting at the feet of Jesus. You say, why? Well, he's not physically here. <laughs> and you can't just, you know, go up to Jesus' house and say, Lord, let me sit at your feet. But the Bible gives us these beautiful pictures of what it means to sit at the feet of Jesus today. And I showed you sitting at the feet of Jesus is likened unto prayer. And so when your prayer life struggles, it's just a testimony that your love for Christ struggles. Your prayer is truly your communion with God. Your Bible reading of His is His communion with you. That's how He speaks to you. But do you remember what it was like, gentlemen, when you first fell in love? <laughs> You know what you want to do? You just wanted to talk to her. You just wanted to spend time with her. You would write letters to her, some of you. <laughs> you, you would just want to be around her. You know why? Because you had that deep love for her. And you'll find out when you're really in love with Christ, yeah. prayer's not a burden. Right. Yeah. Prayer's a privilege. Amen. I get to talk to the one who died for me. And, and so I'm simply telling you, this is... True for all of us, and when our prayer life struggles, that's a sign that our love for Christ is starting to struggle. And it'd be a good indication it's time to realize, I need to go spend some more time at the feet of Jesus Christ. See, all these things are not an excuse to not serve Jesus Christ. God saved you to serve Him. But these two ladies are a picture of how we can go too far one direction and then we need to realize we got to come back to the feet of Jesus Christ. We also saw that Bible reading is sitting at the feet of Jesus. I hope you read your Bible. I hope you read it daily. Uh, I, I'm just blown away and, and just so thankful for how many people have already turned in their charts that they've read their Bible through the year. And it's not a competition. We're not uh, uh, mentioning names. I'm not going to say, yep, brother, brother Doug did and brother Cisco did it. <laughs> That's not the point. So that's why no names will be mentioned. You know why I did that? I just want to encourage you to read your Bible. You know why I know? If you'll read your Bible, you'll fall in love with Christ. Amen. And reading your Bible is a sign that you love Christ. Now again, hear me out. I didn't say you don't love him at all if you're not reading your Bible. I'm just saying you're not loving him properly. And so ask yourself, how is your Bible reading? You know what I find out when my Bible reading is struggling? Now this is me and I'm not the measure. But you know what I find out when my Bible reading is struggling? It's not because I'm living in some gross sin. Hear me out. It's because I'm too cumbered about with serving. I start looking at my life and I got all these things in the fire and I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. They're for Christ. But what has happened is my love has got a little bit out of balance and my Bible reading is struggling. My prayer is struggling. I need to say, you know what I need to do? Just sit back at the feet of Jesus for a while. Not only Bible reading, but studying your Bible. A lot of us love doing this, but you know what that is? That's sitting at the feet of Jesus. You're hearing his words and you're seeing the beauty of the book and you're putting the pieces together. That is spending time at the feet of Jesus Christ. And I think a lot of you do that, but some of you probably should start doing that. Yeah, amen. I'd be deceived to think that everyone here, all thousand people here this morning do that. <laughs> no, that's not true, right? Amen. Some of you need to realize you could quit trying to study what CNN says. Yeah. And get into what the Word of God says. We also saw that giving thanks with those ten lepers. One came back and fell at the feet of Jesus and gave thanks. I find it very hard to complain and murmur and, and be cumbered about if you're thankful. And so we not only identified the problem, we looked at what it meant to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ as a Christian in 2022. And 
that brings me to where I want to pick up at this morning. The double salutation of adoration establishes the path. The path of truly loving Christ. See, Christian, it is real easy to point out somebody's problem. And we're all real good at doing that. I promise you I won't do it because just my nature, but I see problems in a lot of your lives. If they would just do this. And this person's not doing that. And if you're honest, you see problems in my life. That's human nature. But it's easy to point out problems. Christ just doesn't point out problems. He establishes the path of true adoration, of true loving him. And so we need to look at that for a few moments. Look at verse 42, if you would. And he establishes the path. He says, but one thing is needful. Mary has chosen that good part. Martha, Martha, you're cumbered about much. You're complaining. You're caught up in your serving. There's one thing needful. Mary has chosen that good part. This is not going to be profound and it's not going to be long. You know what the path of adoration is? I've already said it multiple times. It's simply sitting at the feet of Jesus. That's the path. That's, Mary's doing it. There's one thing needful, Martha. And Mary's chosen it. Mary's doing it. Well, we saw their position. Mary was at the feet of Jesus was Martha was about serving. We saw their priorities. Mary was hearing the words of Jesus while Martha was complaining about Mary. So the path is established. It's not even that profound, but it sure is hard to live. And so the path is to spend some time at the feet of Jesus. I truly believe that's the only way you'll fall in love with Christ. Now remember what I told you sitting at the feet of Jesus is. Prayer. Reading your Bible. Studying your Bible. Giving thanks to God. And I just think if we'd get back to some of these basic principles, that fire would be kindled in your heart again. That joy would come back again. And you'll start finding out that your mind start changes, your heart start changes, and the things of this world don't bother you anymore because you're so in love with Jesus Christ. And simply some of you just need to realize, I have a problem. But the path is simply I need to go back to the feet of my Savior. And so we see there the path. But do you realize that God knows what's best for you? And so not only do we see the path, but when we see the double salutation of adoration enables you, the listen to me, the spiritual profit from doing it. Hear me out for a moment. Understanding that you have a problem, realizing there's a path to solve that problem, and truly sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ is that path. And you say, well, why would I do that? Well, you would do that because it pleases him. Isn't that what your life's all about? Your life is simply to please Jesus Christ. And let me say this. If that's the only reason you did it, that's good enough. Because that's why he created you for thy pleasure thou art and were created but can i remind you we serve a good god see when you do this when you go to the path that is what you should do because it glorifies god but what i'm telling you is there is a spiritual profit for you in doing so because god knows what's best and so yes he'll get glory from it but you'll benefit from it It's kind of like the idea that God saved you, and man, that's good enough. But you get a chance to serve him. Wow, man, what a privilege. And then getting a chance to serve him, he's going to reward you. (laughs) What a thought, man. We get the best of both worlds. We get saved, we get to serve him, and we get rewarded. 